Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're diving into the world of microneedling. As an aesthetic RN, I've performed countless treatments on my patient, but today is going to be my first time trying microneedling on myself. We're going to compare and contrast two popular microneedling pens, the Dr. Pen M8, which is the one we use in our professional med spa, and then the Banisher 3.0, which was generously sent to me by the company. I'll be using the Dr. Pen an MA on one half of my face and the Banisher 3.0 on the other and then we'll evaluate the performance side by side and I'll share my honest thoughts and experiences with you. So let's get started and see how these two pens stack up against each other. First off, I just want to share a little bit about what microneedling is, as some of you might not know. Microneedling is a minimally invasive skin rejuvenation procedure. It involves the use of a device that contains fine needles, and these needles are used to puncture the skin at various depths to create a controlled skin injury. Each puncture creates a channel that triggers the body to fill these microscopic wounds by producing new collagen and elastin, which are key to a youthful looking skin. Microneedling is designed to improve skin texture and firmness, reduce scars, pore size, and stretch marks. It can also help with issues like wrinkling, fine lines, acne, hair loss, and hyperpigmentation. First things first, let's get our hair away from our face because we're going to be using some serums and there's going to be a little bit of blood so we don't want anything to contaminate and touch our face while we're doing this. Okay, this is what Banish sent me. It's the microneedling pen. It has, I believe, like two replaceable heads. And as part of the kit, they send a little package. And it comes with the Banish Vitamin C Dark Spot Corrector Serum. Let's take a look at this. And then yeah, it comes with two heads. If you look closely, you can see the fine needles. Okay. So those are the little needle heads. This is not part of the Banish 3.0 kit, but this is just extra stuff that they sent me. This is the Vitamin C Cream Brightening Daily Moisturizer. This is the Banish Pore Shrinking Toner that's uh, watermelon flavored. The last thing they sent is this Banish Ceramide Retinol Serum. Oh, and they also included this piece of paper where it kind of teaches you where you can use the Banisher 3.0. Or you can also use it for your scalp too. Interesting. Each head, they talk about how many times you can use it. So if you do your whole face, you can reuse the head three to four times. And you should do it once every other week. Let's start using the Banisher 3.0. They give a little card with instructions in the Banisher kit. It's pretty self-explanatory. Always start with thoroughly cleanse skin and hands. So let me wash my hands and then wash my face. currently using Lancome's cream mousse. Number one, disinfect the banisher. Pull cap off and pour 70% isopropyl alcohol in the cap up to fill line. Pop cap back on and let the bristles fully touch the alcohol for five minutes and let air dry for one to two minutes. So here's the fill line. I don't have 97% isopropyl alcohol, but I picked this up from Walmart. This is 91%. Fair enough, right? Pretty close. Let's pop 
pop the brush with the needle. Let me set my timer. I know it says five minutes, but I'm just gonna set it for 10 minutes. It's starting, now we just wait. In the meantime, while I'm waiting, this is an optional step, but it says wipe skin with an alcohol wipe and let dry. In our med spa, before we do the microneedling, we always use alcohol and kind of like disinfect the skin first. So I'm just gonna do that too. Make sure to hold your breath because around the nose, woo, very alcoholy. Stop. It is time. Then I'm just gonna let it air dry for one to two minutes. Moving on, press the banisher three to five times on each area. Lift banisher up before pressing down again. And then after we do all that, we're gonna put the banisher serum on the skin after using the banisher. They also have some read first before using on the notes here. They said, please patch test the banisher on a small area of skin before use. Do not use it over any rash, acne, wound, or infection. And do not apply makeup cosmetics after use until the next morning or at least eight hours after using the banisher. Do not apply any exfoliating acids to immediately afterwards. All right, sounds pretty self-explanatory. Okay, it's been air drying for a couple of minutes. Let's start now. Okay, this is a little bit nerve wracking. So I'm gonna do the banisher on uh, this side of my face. This is so weird. Like I would do these on my patients, but now that I'm actually doing it on myself for the first time, it's a little bit nerve wracking. Usually this part of the face has more fat and because it has more fat, it's usually not as painful. So I'm just gonna start right here on the cheeks first. Okay, I definitely do feel the needles. Oh, it's starting to get red, which is totally normal. You get used to the little sting or pain. I'm getting the hang of it. Pretty easy. All you do is press up and down, up and down three times per area. It's gonna be a little bit of a stingy pain, right? Cause it's still needles, but at least you can control how deep you wanna do it. And for example, like the more sensitive areas here and up here, I just don't do it as deep. Okay, so the forehead is usually also really sensitive. So let's just give that a try. Ooh, painful, spiky. Gotta do it really gentle up here. along the temples is also kind of sensitive too. Ooh, yeah, when it hits the bone, it is pain. Now I'm gonna do it on my nose, and then the upper lip. Okay, I think I'm done. I just have to use the Banisher Serum, which is included in the kit. Ooh, it stings my face. Oh my God. Ooh. It's like burning when I put the serum on, but that means it's working, right? Cause in beauty, no pain is no gain. <laughs> so per this sheet here that they provided, we can use the same head for the entire face three to four times. Basically you just disinfect the needles with the isopropyl alcohol and then you can reuse it again. I am done with the left side of my face with the banisher. Let's move on to the Dr. Pen M8 with the right side of my face. Okay, so this is the Dr. Pen Ultima M8. Let's unbox this thing. So it comes with these disposable nano needle heads. They give you 12 of these needle heads right here. So this is the pen. And this is the USB charging port. And then you plug it into the back like this right here. 
and then you plug this in to charge. And then here, you can adjust the depth of the needle by turning it like this. And they have instructions on how to use it too. It's pretty simple and self-explanatory. I'm going to charge the pen because there's no batteries. So there's the light and it's charging. Let's charge it for maybe 15 to 30 minutes and we'll see from there. Right, time to move on with Dr. Pen on this side of my face. You press the button and hold it for three seconds to turn it on. And then there's different speeds or settings. There's six total, so it's one right now, and this is level six. They also come with these disposable needle heads, one time use, and then you toss it away. You just attach the needle, and then you just remove this part. So this arrow here controls the depth of the needle. The deepest depth is 2.5 and the lowest is 0.25. So depending on the area of the face, for example, for some sensitive areas, you would go more shallow and then on the more fatty areas, you can go a little bit deeper. Usually we use a hydrating serum, one that kind of contains hyaluronic Acid. I don't have a serum right now on hand, so I'm just gonna use this emulsion right here. Emulsions are a little bit thicker than serums, but I think it does the job. Usually do it first on a small area of the face. I do horizontal, vertical, and then kind of like in circles. And you want to glide it on the face. You don't want to drag it. Dragging damages the skin. Let's start with this area first. So you just like rub it generously like this. Turn on the pen. I'm gonna start at one. Let's just start the death at 1.0. I have to say, initial death at 1.0 is not as painful as the Banisher one. Like that one, even if you press it gently, you still feel something. That's the first pass. I want to do two passes. So yeah, just the main thing really is make sure it glides smoothly. And of course, you can adjust the death level based on your preference. Like I know some people have really deep acne scars and we would go at a deeper death, like almost 2.0 you know, they would bleed much more. But I don't think I really need to go that deep because my skin's already very delicate, so. I'm done micro-needling both sides of my face. So after micro-needling, some mild swelling, a little bit of bleeding, redness is okay. That is very normal. I have to say for me, I didn't do it like too deep, but I am not bleeding, but I definitely see some redness. And then usually the following day, you can like wash your face with a gentle cleanser and whatnot. And you should usually wait like 24 hours before you apply makeup and sweat. Also, after microneedling, try not to use any skincare products that have active ingredients um, like retinol and whatnot. This is how it is. I'll give you a little bit of an update tomorrow to see how my skin is. But yeah, after the Dr. Pen microneedling, super easy. Just twist and pop the cap out and then just dispose it. Hello, good morning. Today is the next day. This is how my skin looks. So I definitely do feel like my skin is more plump. I do feel like, yeah, there's like more collagen. I don't know how to explain it. I, I know you can't feel collagen, but I definitely do feel like the texture is also more supple and plump. So a lot of the redness has already resided. So yeah, like really there's not a lot of downtime. And yes, this is my skin, natural lighting. I'm standing by a glass door and I'm not putting any filters or anything, okay? Looks pretty good.
We finally come to the end where I share my thoughts about these pens and list some of the pros and cons of each one. So let's start with the Banisher 3.0. The Banisher 3.0 uses a stamp design, which does make it easier to control and it provides a more even pressure, making it very beginner friendly. The bristles are also gold plated, which has antimicrobial properties. Another thing great about the Banisher 3.0 is that it is cheaper and more affordable at only $125 and they also provide you with the Banisher Serum as part of the kit. The only con that I can really think of for the Banisher is that the bristles can become dull after after several uses. So it does need to be replaced after that if you're doing like your whole face or a large portion of your face. Some of the pros for the Dr. Pen M8 is that it has adjustable needle lengths and six speed levels, making it highly customizable for different skin concerns. It also has a digital display for easy control of the speed settings. And also it's equipped with a powerful motor providing more micro channels per surface area. For the cons of the Dr. Pen N8, it is definitely on the more expensive side. It's like around 175-ish dollars. It does need to be charged or plugged in to be used wirelessly. It definitely requires more technique to use. Like for example, you need to be able to do it horizontally, vertically, kind of diagonally. It's it's not hard, but it's definitely more handwork instead of just stamping up and down. And also like depending on the area of the face, you have to adjust the speed and the depth, etc. So all of that can be a little bit overwhelming for beginners. For first time micro needling users, I would recommend the Banisher 3.0 because it's a stamp design, which makes it easier to control. And I think it's also less intimidating for beginners. And if you don't even know if you're gonna be doing this long term because I hear many stories where, yeah, people would try it, but do they actually have the persistency to do it? Like, you know, every couple of weeks for a long period of time to see results. A lot of people are just lazy or don't care enough. Like they'll try it once and then, you know, just throw in the closet. So if you don't know if you wanna do it long term, the Banisher is also the cheaper option. And I would say both of them have pretty similar-ish results. If you're a beginner, just, I would say pick the Banisher through Oh, and if you want to be more advanced or whatever later on, you can always get the Dr. Pen later. But I think the Banisher 3.0 does a sufficient job in terms of what it's designed to do. If any of you guys have any personal experiences using any of these pens or any tips you want to share about these two micro needling pens, share them in the comments below. I would love to hear like what all you guys think about these pens from people that have actually tried and used it. See you next time. Bye.